What's up, my triple loving YouTube friends? Huge weekend. It's Saturday. Huge weekend this weekend. Cheers. Cheers to all my YouTube friends. Well, we've been hitting it hard. Trent and I uh, been out in the shop all day, hitting it as hard as we possibly can. Um, a lot of things that held stuff up was fab work. Fab work takes forever. I mean, just to make a simple exhaust bracket, two and a half, three hours into it to make it. A couple coolant and oil jug brackets, same thing, a couple hours a piece. It takes forever to fab that stuff. Uh, thank God Trenton runs at a fast pace of putting things together because it takes me forever to fab something to keep us moving forward. But um, amazing, amazing weekend. Um, yeah, I ain't gonna hold you in suspense anymore. I picked up the hood the other day and I think my decal lady rocked this completely out of the, that she, she knocked the ball completely out of the ballpark. I love it. It looks incredible. Um, yeah, I mean, I told her I just want it to kind of look like a 94 XLT when she's done. And uh, she's got the tunnel. I got the tunnel decals actually sitting here. I got to put them on yet. I got to put the trailing arm decals on yet. I did put the decals on the tunnel on uh, part sled here. I love it. It just wraps right into the uh, hood now. Looks incredible. I did switch out the windshield. Um, like I said, I, I didn't really want to ride with a low windshield. I might switch it out in the spring if it gets really nice out, but I love these Cobras. They keep me warm, and if I'm warm, I'm happy when I'm riding. If my hands stay warm, I'm a much happier rider. So um, this just showed up the other day. Uh, Fowler Parts and Service is a lot, it was one, I used to use HPE, and they sold out, and actually Fowler Parts and Service in Ogilvy, Minnesota bought HPE's inventory. Um, so that's where I get a lot of my stuff from. They had a couple of these windshields. That's where we got the windshield for two bag also, uh, was from, from Fowler. Uh, I've had some, uh, I put it on Facebook. I've had some people either way, they think the windshield's too big. Well, here's the thing. My 17 year old daughter, this is her sled. This is her primary rider. I want her to stay warm. So yeah, windshields, it's, it's right up there, but it'll block the wind. Um, don't want to be cold. You can always look cool, but you don't want to be cold. So I think the windshield's fitting for her. Um, yeah, like I said, just no reason to be cold. We struggled with this skid. My God, Trenton beat his head against the wall. I looked through every race performance book I had here. I even reached out to my shock guy, and I'm going to give you a little bit of insight of what we finally figured out, and I'm sure a lot of you are, are going to comment and say, oh, I already knew that. Well, I didn't. And it was a struggle. And I know when we first got this sled, it looked weird because somebody had put a tunnel extensions on the back to bring the skid out of the tunnel. So these sleds were originally set up where the bolt was up in the tunnel, here and up there. You can already see what I did to try and resolve this problem. So the front of the skid was so far off the floor, like only about 16 inches of track would even touch the floor when it was sitting on the floor. And when you sat on the sled, it would just completely clap out. It would drop three inches when you sat on it. And I, we could not figure it out, could not figure it out. We adjusted limiters, we adjusted this, we adjusted that. We tried different springs, on and on and on. I'm like, you know, I think we got to drop the front of the skid because the rear's drop. Drill the hole. I, I made a mark, drilled new holes. We dropped the skid down. Bam. The perfect inch and a half drop at the bumper when the rider sits on and it rebounds almost the full inch and a half back up when the rider gets off. Before, if you sat on it, it would collapse three inches. So if you think about this, when your sled is sitting on carts, and I've done this before, we've had the skis on carts and the rear skid, the cart sitting at the back. You sit on your sled, it just claps. Well, it's kind of what was going on here, being it was only the rear part of the skid on the floor, that's taking your whole initiative when you sit down on it that front skid has to travel so far until it touches the floor. Well, now the front skid's on the floor and so is the back. Now it's sharing the load on that front part of the suspension as far as the rear part, but rear part of the suspension. So if you have a sled that claps way out when you sit down on it, take a look at how your skid's mounted in there because this, this, we spent way too much time trying to figure out something so simple. I should have figured this out a long time ago because we've actually, we've made this adjustment on other sleds and I don't know why we refuse to just drill new holes right off the bat. I mean, it's, it's kind of a fix we even knew. But open up the hood, Trenton. Let's take a little gander and eat the hood of this thing. 
I mean, it looks so beautiful. And we, we still got some tidying things up. We got a, I just did a little air box modification to make that fit, but I got to make uh, some parts to close the air box back up. I had to cut the bottom part of the air box over here because this is where the oil jug needed to be mounted. It was up kind of high, so that kind of interfered with the oil box there. But we got the coolant jug, the oil jug mounted. I did get the hose holders on here and stuff that I talked about. We're, I, I would say we're 90% we're right now, complete. Got to deal with the brakes. Uh, every master cylinder we had around here leaks. So I'm putting an order in for a couple of Willwoods. We'll put a Willwood on here and we'll put a Willwood on part sled. I was trying to just use Polaris ones because in my opinion, I think they're a good master cylinder, but we're done messing with them. Um, we've dripped brake fluid on everything. The fittings I have to go in there to put the braided line on is not sealing correctly. And I'm just done. I'm moving on. Um, tired of leaking brake fluid on everything. I have a local guy now, um, very local, like five miles from my house, that started doing seat covers. So I'm going to try them out. I've been messaging him, and I'm actually bringing him the seat off of here and the seat off a of part sled. And he's going to put the covers on that uh, Shane Jackson actually set me up with. So he's going to put them on. He's going to put the heat sink uh, decals on for me too. And uh, we'll see how that, all that goes. And... Um, He's, he's pretty geared up. He's want, gonna wanna, he's wanting to hold the torch for running these seat covers. So, um, yeah, since my last guy retired, I wouldn't mind finding another local guy. That'd be great. So, but here it is. Um, got the ski loops, and I think Trent should have the honors of bending the key on this thing. Maybe put the hood back down, Trenton. Um, for once, I don't have to say, Trenton, let's uh, rip, rip the old pull cord on this thing because it's got electric start. Go ahead, Trenton. We could have fun with that electric starter all day long because that is so freaking awesome. We actually, before we even did this video, um, we had Bree come down here being, this is her sled. I wanted her to see it run before it ended up on this video. So she got on it. I said, turn the key. She bumped it. It fired up. The smile on her face was incredible. So that's, that's pretty awesome. That'll make it so much easier for her to be able to start her own sled. Um, I love it. It's, it's, it's freaking sweet. Sounds awesome. It's not overly loud. Um, it's going to be a fun little ride for her. Um, it'll be a fun little ride for me if I want to just go out for a little tool on it too, but can't thank Trenton enough. Um, he's the machine when it comes to putting stuff together. He did, he did so much work on this thing, and uh, yeah, I mean, it would be in pieces still if it was all on my shoulders to do this thing. So um, I'm, we're really close. 
I think I got the carb set pretty dang close. And this thing actually, I mean, we checked for spark. We tickled the cylinders with some gas. He bumped the key and it fired up like that, like how it's firing right now. We, and we had to restart it a couple times. The carbs were dry, so we choked, but that thing started so quick. And uh, we got plenty of oil in the, uh, in the crankcase now when I assembled it. And we got, I think we're mixed at about 40 to one in the gas tank. So we'll run it a little bit like that and uh, make sure that oil injection and stuff's working and, and all primed up. But this is, this is what we're going to be focusing on next. Trenton's going to actually st start studding the track tonight. But uh, this is the next thing. We just picked up the pipes. Trenton did. Picked up the pipes from uh, race coatings. So we got the LRM pipes back for part sled now. Um, start moving forward. We, we got the wire harness from um, Mohawk Salvage. At the last video, um, Eric from Mohawk Salvage reached out to me and says, hey, I got a wire harness. Um, so yeah, he, he shipped it. I just paid shipping and he shipped it all. He gave me the wire harness. That was great of him. So thanks a lot, Eric, on the wire harness. Um, Trenton started cleaning it up so we can get that mounted in here. And uh, yeah, we can start, start assembling this one now too. We'll just button up. I kind of got a list of things that need to be buttoned up on here. So thanks for watching, everybody. Very exciting day. Um, just... I predicted last week and we'd be firing this thing up this week and I didn't think it'd be on Saturday though. So thanks everyone. See you in the next one. Hit that key again, Trenton.